Okay, so we're here in the chat fuel dashboard. Let's begin building out this lead generation experience for Nissan Israel. In the welcome message here, this is the first message that new users who are interacting with the bot are going to see. You can think of it like the homepage of a website. Let's just dive right into things and ask the first question, which is basically, what model do you want? To do this, I've just added a text element right here. And then let's display a list of the different car models. To do that, I'm gonna use the gallery card here. It's a nice way to visually display in a carousel format different options for the user. And I'm gonna add three here for the three different vehicles I'll be showing. Let's upload this image. I'll crop it. And move it down a little bit. Perfect, and then I'll upload the other two. Perfect. Let's add a heading here for each of these. I'll call this the Altima GTR and Titan. Perfect. So, so far things are looking good. What model do you want? And then they can choose from each of these three vehicles. However, first we need to actually add buttons to each of them so they can make that selection. But before we do that, let's create three corresponding blocks. Blocks are like pages of a website for each of these vehicles so we can tag the user accordingly based on which one they choose. So I'm gonna create a group of blocks here and I'll call these cars, let's say. I'll say Altima, GTR, and Titan. This will make more sense in a second. Then let's add a button here for each of the cars so the user can select their preferred option. I'll say select, select, select. And then let's connect these buttons to the corresponding block. So I'll connect this to Altima, this to GTR, and this one to Titan. Okay. So the user will select which of the vehicles they prefer here. And then what we wanna do on these corresponding blocks is create what's called an attribute. It's a way to segment and tag users based on the choice so that when we're sending this lead information to the sales team, they actually know what vehicle was selected. So I'm gonna to go to Ultima first. I'm gonna click this plus button to see other elements we can add here. And I'm gonna select user attribute. I'll call this car, for example, and for the value, we'll say Ultima. We'll do the same for GTR and Titan. Perfect, so we have all of these attributes created. Once the user clicks on the respective vehicle, it'll send them to one of these blocks where then they will be tagged and then continue the experience. So the next question that we wanna ask is, have you made your mind up on what vehicle you want? This is one way to determine the warmth of the lead and determine whether or not they're very qualified. So let's now create a new block where we'll ask the next question. I'm gonna call this question two. And since each of these blocks just serve the purpose of tagging the user, we then wanna funnel each of these three blocks into just the next question. So we don't have to keep creating all these different variations. To do that, we're gonna use what's called the go to block, which will just send the user to this block initially and then send them to the question two block without us having to duplicate lots of content. So we're gonna connect each of these to question two and this will make more sense when I show you this on the user side of things in a minute here. Okay, so now we're gonna go from the welcome message, they select the vehicle, it tags them accordingly, then it's gonna send them to the next question, which is, have you made your mind up on this vehicle? If we wanna be more personalized as well, instead of saying on this vehicle, we can actually dynamically replace the word vehicle with whatever selection they made. So for example, if we type in the two open brackets on the keyboard and type in car instead, it'll then display the model, the value of whatever car they selected. So if I select the GTR, for example, it would say 
have you made your mind up on this GTR? A very efficient way to create personalization at scale in the experience. Now we'll have two options. For this, we can use either uh, buttons or quick replies. I'll use quick replies. Uh, more on that later. And we'll either say yes or no. So if they have made up their mind on this car, that's great. We're going to send them to a block called qualified. If they haven't, we can just uh, build out the rest of the experience down here since we'll just say something like, uh, that's okay, thanks for looking. And we'll just leave a dead end there. So if they say no, we just send them this message, you know, nothing special, it's basically a dead end. If they say yes, that's awesome, that implies they're continuing to be qualified. And then we'll ask for their contact information if they submit that then we'll send all of that info to the sales team. So let's then go to the qualified block right here where we'll ask for that contact information. To do that, we're gonna click the plus button again and select either user email or user phone, or we could ask for both if we want them to be really qualified. That's what Nissan Israel did. But I'll just say email in this case to simplify things. And this plugin is really cool because as mentioned earlier in this course, we have Facebook data at our disposal, right? So instead of somebody having to manually type out their email address here, we can populate for them a quick reply uh, with that information. So then they can just click it and with one tap, their contact info is submitted to us. So we'll just use this default text here, you know, please share your email address below and we'll save this to an attribute called email. This is important, uh, we need to do this so we can save this data and pass it along to the sales team. That's what one of the purposes that attributes serve. For example, in the model, and then here with the email address. So then finally, if they submit this email address, we'll send them a confirmation message saying, thanks, our sales team will contact you soon. Right, so we give them that confirmation. And then the final step here before I preview this and show you what it looks like to a subscriber interacting with the bot is where do we actually send all of this data, right? How do we access it? Where do we export it, et cetera? And there's three main options that we have here. The first of which is the send email plugin. This is not to send an email to the user interacting with the bot it's instead to send an email alert to our own team. So for example, if you wanted to email your sales team at the dealership every time a new lead comes in, you could use this plugin to do that. So for example, we could say new lead from, and if we wanted to, we could personalize the, su the subject line of this email with the user's last name on Facebook. These purple attributes come from Facebook. The brown ones are ones that we create, like email up here. So we could say new lead from, in this case, Demeter, we could uh, send it to a specific email address such as mine, demeter at chatfield.com, or we could send it to multiple email addresses by, by separating them with a comma. Then in the email body, we could pass through some information like, for example, the user's name, their email, and the model they're interested in. So we could fill this in, typing those two open brackets again, using first name, last name, for email, we could type in email, and then for model, we type in car. And that would send all the relevant information to that salesperson at their email address. Another option that we have, which is my personal favorite, is the Save to Google Sheets plugin. And this is awesome because what it'll do is allow you to export all of the lead data you are capturing to a Google Sheet, a centralized spreadsheet where you have full control of all of that information. So for example, I can click connect to Google Sheets. It'll prompt me to sign in. I'll click allow. As soon as I do that, it's gonna create for me a blank spreadsheet in Google Sheets, where then again, all of this data will be automatically saved in real time whenever a new lead comes in. So I can open this Google Sheet. And you see right here, it's a blank spreadsheet. But what I can then do is go back into Chatfuel and pass through certain attributes here. So we'll do the same ones that we used in the send email plugin. Let's do first name, last name, email, and car. And now in real time, if I go back into the Google Sheet, you'll see that these columns have automatically populated. So again, whenever a new lead gets to that point in the bot, they've successfully complete, completed the lead form, 
that data will be saved into a new row and this is accessible to anybody we want. They don't have to have access in chat fuel, which is amazing. The other third option that you have is called export via Zapier, this integration, this plugin down here. So if I click that, I'm not going to cover it extensively here. It'll be covered in a later video, but you have the ability to integrate with a third party tool called Zapier, which allows you to integrate chat fuel with over a thousand other third party tools, apps, software. So basically, if you wanted to integrate directly with MailChimp, Infusionsoft, a CRM, whatever tool you want to integrate with, you can do that using Zapier and it doesn't require any coding whatsoever. So I'm going to delete this plugin for the time being and just show you on the user side of things what this flow, what this experience would look like. So to do that, I'm going to click test your bot here and oops, let me go to the welcome message, my bad. And I'll test this from the beginning. Okay, so it asked me, what model do you want? I'll say the GTR, I'm feeling sporty. Have you made your mind up? I'll say yes. Cool, it asked for my email. I'll click that to submit it. Bam, our sales team will contact you. So that's what I experience on the user side of things. And then you'll see here in Google Sheets, only the people who are qualified are getting their data saved here. So again, the bot's doing all the legwork. All of our qualified leads who we need to follow up with are just saved here. It simplifies that whole process for the sales team. And quite frankly, it's simple for the user as well. So hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you in the next case study video.